Hello there everyone. Welcome, welcome. My name is Ariel. I am the Sassy Dragon back with another perfume review. Um, this one comes at one of my subscribers request. Thank you for that to do more reviews on Chanel fragrances and I'm very happy to oblige because I really love Chanel fragrance. Um, it's something that you know I haven't smelled certainly everything that they make um, but I love Allure. I I'm now going to introduce you to um, probably one that needs no introduction, but it is my favorite of the Chanel's that I have smelled so far. <laughs> um, that could always change once I smell more of them, but my favorite currently is going to be the Coco Mademoiselle Intense Version, and yes, I do have the giant bottle that I am slowly but surely working my way through here. Um, this is the 6.8 ounce bottle. If you really love this perfume as much as I do, um, I always recommend buying the big bottle. It may not be the most travel friendly thing, but it is a little bit uh, better for your, your uh, buck. It gets you a little bit more value for that size. So I do have the large bottle. I do as well have a smaller one in the 3.4. And um, this is one I just love, so I don't mind having a backup at all. And that one's a little bit easier to travel with. Now, we can't talk about Coco Mademoiselle Intense without, of course, talking originally about the first Coco Mademoiselle. I did have a bottle of this one. I no longer do because it's not as big of a favorite for me. So I do have a little sample vial of the original Coco Mademoiselle. I am going to sample both of these for you today because I actually haven't smelled this in a minute and I want to kind of remind myself remind my nose what it is about this one that I don't like quite as much but this one was formulated in 2001 guys so this was a big one you know at the beginning of of the 2000s um Coco Mademoiselle was a big deal it was a younger fresher um less classic smell than like the traditional ones like you know number five and so this was uh, considered an amber floral created by Jacques Polge um, the top notes of orange mandarin, orange bergamot, and orange blossom. So it's very citrusy in the beginning. Yeah, it really comes out strong with that. The middle notes are rose, jasmine, mimosa, and lang lang. And base notes of patchouli, white musk, vanilla, and vetiver, tonka bean, and opopinac. So this won a lot of awards. It had a big reception. Um, it's still a classic favorite. I think in more recent years, um, Coco Mademoiselle has maybe fallen off in terms of its intense popularity that enjoyed in the early 2000s. But in some ways, I kind of like that because not as many people are going to be smelling just like you. I remember in the early 2000s, everybody smelled like Coco Mademoiselle. It was everywhere. And it's not a bad thing because it is a gorgeous perfume. And as I'm sitting here smelling it, you know, it is very beautiful. Um, it's clean, yet slightly sweet, slightly floral. It's got that same, you know, elegance that, you know, a Chanel perfume has come to be recognized for. And the thing that I love probably about both of the Coco Mademoiselles is I feel that they are very, they're all season, they're all occasion. You could wear this anytime, any day, winter, spring, summer, fall, it doesn't matter. This is a great perfume. Spray it a little bit less if you don't want to be as loud with your fragrance. Spray it a little lighter if you want, you know, spray it a little more if you want to be more obvious, more noticeable. So I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, Coco Mademoiselle Intense. I'm going to spray this one on the other arm. And it's interesting to do this because I haven't um, smelled them both, you know, right side by side before. So this is kind of fun. Um, so getting the original one again, I'm going to let this one dry down just a little bit. The big difference for me in the Intense is that it has a very strong patchouli. Some people love it, some people don't. To me, it gives it kind of an earthy, grounded quality that the original does not have quite as much of. I love them both. Oh my goodness. So as uh, let's get into the notes of the Intense, our Sicilian Orange calabrian bergamot and lemon so it still opens up with some citrus but not quite as much the middle notes get into some rose and jasmine 
along with some undefined fruity notes. So that's an interesting combination. This is uh, taking the notes off of Fragrantica, guys, so you can look those up if you so desire. But the big thing that I feel that comes out and it shows up more as it dries down, it has a very, very strong, what they call an overdose of patchouli. It has a stronger vanilla tonka bean in the base to me. Um, it doesn't have as, um, I think the other one had vetiver in the base. This one does not. This is a white musk and labanum, and it's a little different the way it emerges. So it's, you know, I would not call it a gourmand, but it is a little sweeter. It's less citrus. Um, it's a little less high octave for me, and what I mean by that is it's not quite as, like, high-pitched. Some people might call it screechy. I don't call it that because I don't consider it to be an obnoxious scent at all. I think the original is quite beautiful. Um, but it's a, a higher note. It's a little punchier. It's a little sparklier. It's a little bit more noticeable. Um, for some people that could be a little headache inducing. It isn't for me personally, but in the intense it's a little bit softer. If you don't like patchouli, you may not like the Intense because it does have quite a bit of that in there. But for me, that creates this sort of, you know, deeper grounding effect. Um, I wouldn't say one or the other is stronger, actually. So it's a little bit funny to call this an Intense perfume because I wouldn't necessarily say it's either stronger or longer lasting than the original. But what makes it a little bit more intense, a little bit more sensual to me, is that addition of the deeper patchouli a little bit stronger um, tonka bean vanilla in the base, um, less of the higher octave kind of orange and citrus notes. It still has them, but they're not quite as punchy in the opening. And I will tell you, I do get a lot of compliments on this one. Um, if you know, I've sprayed this around um, both, you know, women and men, and you know, when they smell it, they're like, oh, what is that beautiful scent? And I will say, you can't go wrong with either one of these, in my opinion. I mean, there are going to be sure some people that just flat out don't like this scent. That's their prerogative. But I would say it tends to be a bit of a crowd pleaser. Nothing wrong with that because, you know, we all love to smell good. We all love to get compliments. And I would say that this one really is my favorite Chanel so far of all the ones I have smelled. Um, I absolutely love Allure. You can go look at my review of the EDP. Um, the only problem I have with that is it just doesn't last that long for me, but this one, um, in terms of longevity, is excellent. The projection is excellent. It's just right for me because it's a medium projection. It's not going to knock people over, but they definitely notice your fragrance, especially if you spray it, you know, more, you know, at least two or three times. They'll definitely be noticed by your perfume. So guys, um, if there's more Chanel's that you would like to see me review, let me know. I am going to be doing a review of Chanel's number five, Eau Premier, and also their number five, Low. I do love the original number five, but it's a little heavy for my taste, so the ones that I have are the lighter versions. Um, but thank you as always. I hope that you uh, maybe get out there and try this fragrance, or if you already have it and love it, let me know what your thoughts and feelings are about this. Another thing that I wanted to mention, which I thought was really, really cool as I was doing some research on this before I close, is that, so Coco Mademoiselle, the original, was made in 2001 by Jacques Polge, and Coco Mademoiselle Intense was made by his son, Olivier Polge, who took over as the main Chanel perfumer in 2015. So he took over in 2015, released Coco Mademoiselle Intense in 2018. And I just thought that was kind of this really sweet back-to-back -back bookend that the dad made the original and the son made the intense version separated by 17 years time. I just thought that was very, very cool. It's always fun what you unearth when you start, um, you know, reading about or researching fragrances like that. And um, so whichever you choose, they're both gorgeous. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Take care.